So let's take a look at how this is done in SimCenter Test Lab. So we're going to go into Test Lab 2206, Test Lab Environmental, and we're going to go into Mission Synthesis. So we'll start a new project here. Hey, Chris, can you use Test Lab tokens to run Mission Synthesis? That's a great question, Pete. Yes, you can use test lab tokens for mission synthesis. Oh, cool, because I already have tokens, so I'll be able to run this. Absolutely. So we can go right into the mission synthesis workbook here. And the first thing you'll see is the software wants you to save before it starts doing all of its stuff. So it'll come up with a save as, and we'll just pick a file name and save it. I'm just gonna save over something I already had. And you can see our interface here. We have our navigator on the left and then all of our mission synthesis stuff on the right. So let's pull in some data here. So I'm going to go into SimCenter test lab data and I already have some data in here. So we'll find our throughput data and we're just going to add this into our workbook here by clicking on this icon here to create a new environment. Really good icon designers. You want to add data, you hit a plus symbol. That is probably the best way to go, just my humble opinion. And let's do something else fun here. Uh, we can go in and add some shock data as well. So let's take a look. Here we have some shock data we can add. So the next thing we can do is just display all of this. And we can see here we'll hit control and left click display size and maximize this. So we can see the time histories. We've got a nice shock event here. And then we have our other time histories here. This is from a car, an electric vehicle actually, that's going over a test track and a couple different environments there. So this blue trace is a normal kind of accelerate brake. We have the red trace here, which is sawtooth data, we can see here. And then we have this green trace, which is Belgian block. And then of course our fuchsia trace, which is our shock event. I thought the potholes where I live were pretty bad, but those Belgian blocks look pretty rough. They do, don't they? So let's go back to our regular display here. And we have all these highlighted. And what we're going to do is calculate our FDS for each one of these environments. So we hit this button up here, Excitation to MRS FDS. And it's going to come up with this dialog where we can start plugging in some material properties that we discussed before. By default, we've got our Q factor and damping, which are linked to each other. So if I change damping, it's gonna change my Q factor. If I change my Q factor, it's gonna change my damping. Yeah, they're like the inverse of each other, huh? They are. It's actually, uh, the equivalent is, uh, one quantity is equivalent to one over two times the other quantity. You can see we're calculating away here. And now we have the SDF calculated for each one of these environments. And there is a little check mark that happens in the cell here to let us know that we have an FDS calculated here. And I see if you hover over it, it also tells you what the calculation was to get that FDS. 
Correct. It tells you all of the different constants that were used in the calculation as well as the cycle counting method. In this case, we used a direct cycle counting method, range pair. And now what we can do is hit display curves again, and we can see our time histories, our maximum response spectrum, our MRS, and our FDS. MRS is calculated exactly like SRS is. So the MRS of the shock pulse will overlay with an SRS. I saw you zoom in uh, on one of those graphs, but can you make this area a little bit bigger relative to the top? There's a lot of gray area there. Yeah, so I can come in here and I can move this up a little so we can see a little more of our curves and then I can hit control and right click and display size and maximize all of our different FDS curves as well. So you can see for each one of these, we have sawtooth, Belgian block, accelerate break, and, and you would assume from the time history, this accelerate break has the lowest amplitudes that would also have the lowest FDS. So now let's do something else here. We've got each one of these, but this is for just one cycle. Let's say in real life, we might experience this event 10 times, this event 20 times, this accelerate break, maybe we'll see that most of the time, maybe 100 times, and this shock event, maybe we'll see that 250 times or something, you hit this pothole and get this bad shock on your car. Now we can hit shift and highlight all of these, and what we're gonna do is hit this button here, apply number of repetitions. And now this takes our FDS and you can see, let's see, we're one to the minus nine. Now, if we display this again, we'll see how that has shifted all of these up. I see for the first recording, it's zero to 12 seconds. So a repetition of 10 means this would be as if it was exposed to 120 seconds of that. Vibration total? Correct, that's exactly right. Now for the shock event, since we just had one event in that time history, we also are basically saying, okay, we're gonna repeat that shock event specifically 250 times to get this result. All right, so the next thing that we can do is say, all right, well, I have all of these events now, in the case of a car driving down the road, perhaps this is equivalent to some type of sum happening, right? We're gonna experience each one of these things in a lifetime. So we're gonna do a sum and display that. And we can see if we have all of these environments, we're going to have an equivalent FDS of this cyan trace here. Now you have another scenario where maybe your test article is only going to be exposed to one of these environments, but you don't know which one it's going to be in. So what you do is design your test article to survive all of these environments, but not in sequence, just one or the other that would be this envelope FDS here. So we can apply that and see what this looks like. And now in this case, our sum and our envelope are pretty close to each other. So let's just take a look at both of these and we can see, we zoom in, they're really pretty on top of each other here. But uh, just for an example, let's make a copy. Let's say this sawtooth here. And we're gonna do two equivalent traces to just see how this works if you have two traces that are similar to each other. We're gonna calculate the FDS here again using the same numbers. And if we display these, we can see, yes, they're on top of each other. 
But now we'll take the envelope and the sum here and display those. And here we can see what you might expect. Our envelope is right on top of our combined curves, but our sum is some amount higher than our source curves. And that's because that y-axis is in a log scale. It's not like uh, a linear sum, I guess. Uh, that's, that's correct. Why it's it's like adding lines. dB, right? Where you, if you have two sources that are 100 dB, 100 dB plus 100 dB isn't 200 dB, it's 103 dB. The same type of phenomenon here. So that is our demo of calculating fatigue damage in mission synthesis. Again, my name is Chris Sensor. Feel free to reach out to me. My email is chris.sensor at siemens.com. You can also reach me at LinkedIn. And of course, our Siemens community site is a great source of information for all your vibration testing needs. Thanks everyone for listening and hope to see you soon.